It now refers to any attempt to make others believe we are better than we really are. The Lord's prophets have ever raised a warning voice against those who draw near to the Lord with their mouth and with their lips to honor Him, but have removed their heart far from Him. The Savior was understanding and compassionate with sinners whose hearts were humble and sincere. But he rose up in righteous anger against hypocrites, like the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, those who tried to appear righteous in order to win the praise, influence, and wealth of the world, all the while oppressing the people they should have been blessing. Why does this happen? Why do we sometimes try to appear active, prosperous, and dedicated outwardly, when on the inside, as a revelator said on the, of the Ephesians, we have left our first love? In some cases, we may simply have lost our focus on the essence of the gospel. Mistaking the form of godliness for the power thereof. This is especially dangerous when we direct our outward expressions of discipleship to impress others for personal gain or influence. It is then when we are at risk of entering into Pharisee territory. And it is high time to examine our hearts to make an immediate course correction. If Jesus Christ were to sit down with us and ask for an accounting of our stewardship, I'm not sure he would focus much on programs and statistics. What the Savior would want to know is the condition of our heart. He would want to know how we love and minister to those in our care, how we show our love to our spouse and family, and how we lighten their daily load. And the Savior would want to know how and how you and I grow closer to Him and to our Heavenly Father. The greatest, most capable, most accomplished man who ever walked this earth was also the most humble. He performed some of his most impressive service in private moments with only a few observers whom he asked to tell no man what he had done. When someone called him good, he quickly deflected the compliment insisted that only God is truly good. Clearly, the praise of the world meant nothing to him. His single purpose was to serve his Father and do always those things that please him. We would do well to follow the example of our Master. <laughs>